Now that they've got their force established, Yuki and Riku are busy planning their first force battle. Momo doesn't really seem as enthusiastic, which is reasonable. Momo likes the Gundam franchise, but she's not as dedicated to it as these two are. And that's actually something important to consider with any franchise. Some people are willing to put more time and energy into it than others. The whole time Yuki's explaining how force battles and the ranking system works, this whole scene reminds me of how impractical the dive gear actually is. It's a triangle with such advanced technology that we can have holographic touchscreens, solid holograms, and the result is something like an 8-inch tablet. Except you have to pick it up by the triangle so that's not very practical and you can't make the screen bigger so they all have to huddle around the screen. Now that they've decided on a force battle, they head over to the Gunpla store, where of course Koichi's working here now. That's a fairly obvious plot development, but now we have a balance. We have the store employee who doesn't know much about the franchise, and the one who's the Gundam expert. The Factory Zone is more of a magic toy factory as opposed to a realistic depiction of how Gunpla are actually manufactured, and that's in keeping with Build Divers being more of a future fantasy show than science fiction. That's why Riku's able to show these admittedly very detailed drawings, and Koichi's able to turn that into actual Gunpla pieces. <laughs> Momo's idea is such an extreme redesign that Koichi tells her it would be better to just build a new kapul and do the customizations that way, as if customizing the rental was even an option. I know this is exaggerated, but that look of horror is way too much for just remembering Sarah doesn't have a gunpla. <laughs> The scene where Momo stands up for Sarah goes on just long enough that you can notice this awkward look on Sarah's face. They can still do the force battle, they'll just be at a disadvantage, and that's when Riku gets the idea to ask Ayame if she wants to join. Riku is referring to episode 5, where Ayame saved them in the beginning, and then she got kidnapped, which is what I remember, because that's the part of the episode that annoyed me a little bit. But since we're on episode 5, that's the episode that established combining Gunpla, and that you can lend part of your Gunpla to someone else. I bring this up because the stock 00 actually has its own support craft called the O-Riser. There's a very good reason, though, why the show doesn't acknowledge this as a possible solution. It's not that they need to find Sarah a Gunpla, it's that she just doesn't pilot Gunpla. Introducing the O-Riser means that they would have to explain why it wouldn't work. Maybe Riku's not a high enough level to lend Gunpla to other players. The idea that Riku's Gunpla is based in Double O, but it has parts from Gundam Seed was an interesting enough concept that I didn't even think of the O-Riser until the episode was over. There's more to Ayame than just random ninja character, but she's still acting like this very professional, disinterested, eh, whatever, I'll join your force, I don't have anything better to do. Let's face it, the man cannot catch a break when it comes to social interactions. A force nest is just what they call the little room that every team in GBN gets when you start your team. Having the different English words kind of adds a little bit of brand recognition to the show, and it gets your attention. What got my attention was this scene in the prepping montage where I know that's red paint, but Riku's not even painting something red in that scene, and the double-O diver barely has any red. Now that everybody's prepared, it's time to meet our opponent. Rommel's the head of the second most powerful force in GBN, but here's the important part, Momo and Sarah don't know that. If it doesn't bother Rommel, it doesn't bother me. Rommel's the head of the second most powerful force in GBN, but here's the important part, Momo and Sarah don't know that. 
Rommel's team is using various Xeon grunt suits, but some of them have weapon upgrades, including this Zaku with a Gelgoog shield. The question of then why doesn't the pilot just use a Gelgoog or a Gyaradoga or a Goof is in many ways the opposite of the O-Riser question. Here, if you think to ask that question, the possible answers you can come up with almost serve as bonus content. In some ways, it helps you enjoy the episode after it's over. The simple answer is this is all cosmetic and the point of this fight is for the heroes to win while showing off their new gunpla. If you want to get into the symbolism, the gear upgrades could almost be thought of as a representation of Rommel's training. It gives them an advantage that they can't fully utilize. <laughs> Riku's team seems more organic, like these are friends who enjoy the same thing. Rommel's team is together because they're in the same force, and they expect to win. During the battle, they keep cutting back to Rommel to show how he goes from smug optimism... まだまだ始まったばかりだよ。新人部隊の陣形が随分と乱れてきたね。元々戦滅戦は乱戦になりやすいものだからね。To <笑> bit of denial, and then finally. おお、こりゃ体勢決まっちまったかな。ああ、もう何やってんの。ダメダメダメ。パーフェクト負けなんて絶対許さないんだから。Rommel's reaction is not only hilarious, but it's referencing one of my favorite entries in the Gundam franchise. ま、相手が悪かったってことだな。やはり新人教育に必要なのは雨ではなく無知ということだね。こらこら、お手柔らかに。アクサラスは私一人のものだ。the show is doing this because these two have the same Japanese voice actor. That's also why Rommel looks like he's trying to cosplay as Guineas. If you haven't seen 08th MS Team, just understand they have completely different personalities. Sarah. This episode struck an effective balance of story, comedy, and action. Riku's victory is the talk of GBN right now, and even Ogre comments that... It's because of all this, I think the episode has earned this admittedly sappy moment. In the first episode, Riku runs away from Momo instead of calmly telling her that he's not interested in the soccer club. Then later, he wanders off when Yuki's supposed to be helping him look for a gunpla because he just gets bored, he wanders off. <laughs> Riku doesn't say anything about what's gonna happen to Yuki or Sarah, he's just worried about having a bad experience playing a video game. Which is understandable. He's not selfish, he just doesn't have that level of emotional maturity. He's 14. The Gundam franchise and giant robot anime in general are about this idea of growing up. For Riku, this happens when he changes his priorities from get Koichi to join my force to I want this person to be able to enjoy Gundam again. In the last fight, Riku loses his sword guns, just like his fight with Doji. The difference is now Riku's grown as a character with the help of his friends, and the new 00 Diver is an outward reflection of that. It's also got more swords. Sara, Right now, I don't care that Koichi leveled up between episodes or no one mentions the O-Riser. This is an effective way to end the first story arc of Build Divers. <sighs> this is the Hypervisor signing off.